welcome back if you are continuing the videos or if you're just joining us welcome 2019 to 2023 general class question study pool video number 10 the last of the entire series this is presented on behalf of the clay county area amateur radio club located in southern illinois i will be reading your questions michael dickerson kc9 phk sub element g0 covering electrical and rf safety G0A covers RF safety principles, rules, and guidelines, as well as routine station evaluation. G0A01, what is one way that RF energy can affect the human body tissues? A. It heats body tissue. B. It causes radiation poisoning. C. It causes the blood count to reach a dangerously low level. Or D. It cools body tissue. The correct answer is A. It heats body tissue. G0A02, which of the following properties is important in estimating whether an RF signal exceeds the maximum permissible exposure? A. Its duty cycle. B. Its frequency. C. Its power density. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is D. All of these choices are correct. G0A03, how can you determine that your station complies with FCC RF exposure regulations? A. By calculation based on FCC OET Bulletin 65. B. By calculation based on computer modeling. C. By measurement of field strength using calibrated equipment. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Answer is D. All of these choices are correct. G0A04. What does time averaging mean in reference to RF radiation exposure? A. The average amount of power developed by a transmitter over a specific 24-hour period. B. The average time it takes RF radiation to have any long-term effect on the body. C. The total time of exposure. Or D. The total RF exposure averaged over a certain time. Answer is D. The total RF exposure averaged over a certain time. G0A05. What must you do if an evaluation of your station shows RF energy radiated from your station exceeds permissible limits. A. Take action to prevent human exposure to the excessive RF fields. B. File an environmental impact statement, EIS-97, with the FCC. C. Secure written permission from your neighbors to operate above the controlled MPE limits. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Answer is A. Take action to prevent human exposure to the excessive RF fields. G0A06, what precaution should be taken when installing a ground-mounted antenna? A. It should not be installed higher than you can reach. B. It should not be installed in a wet area. C. It should be limited to 10 feet in height. Or D. It should be installed such that it is protected against unauthorized access. The answer is D. It should be installed such that it is protected against unauthorized access. G0A07, what effects does transmitter duty cycle have when evaluating RF exposure? A, lower transmitter duty cycle permits greater short-term exposure levels. B, a higher transmitter duty cycle permits greater short-term exposure levels. C, low duty cycle transmitters are exempt from RF exposure evaluation requirements. Or D, high duty cycle transmitters are exempt from RF exposure requirements. Correct answer is A. A lower transmitter duty cycle permits greater short-term exposure. G0A08, which of the following steps must an amateur operator take to ensure compliance with RF safety regulations when transmitter power exceeds levels specified in FCC Part 97.13? A. Post a copy of FCC Bulletin 97.13 in the station. B. Post a copy of OET Bulletin 65 in the station. C. Perform a routine RF exposure evaluation. Or D. Contact the FCC for a visit to conduct a station evaluation. The correct answer is C. Perform a routine RF exposure evaluation. G0A09. What type of instrument can be used to accurately measure an RF field? A. A receiver with an S-meter. B. A calibrated field strength meter with a calibrated antenna. C. An SWR meter with a peak reading function or D, an oscilloscope with a high-stability crystal marker generator. Answer is B, a calibrated field strength meter with a calibrated antenna. G0A10, 
What is one thing that can be done if your evaluation shows that a neighbor might be receiving more than the allowable limit of RF exposure from the main lobe of a directional antenna? A. Change to a non-polarized antenna with higher gain. B. Post a warning sign that is clearly visible to the neighbor. C. Use an antenna with higher front-to-back ratio. Or D. Take precautions to ensure the antenna cannot be pointed in their direction. Obviously, this already continued. And D. Take precautions to ensure that the antenna cannot be pointed in their direction is the correct answer. G0A11. What precautions should you take if you install an indoor transmitting antenna? A. Locate the antenna close to your operating position to minimize feed line radiation. B. Position the antenna along the edge of the wall to reduce parasitic radiation. C. Make sure that MPE limits are not exceeded in occupied areas. Or D. Make sure the antenna is properly shielded. Answer is C. Make sure the MPE limits are not exceeded in occupied areas. G0B. Covering station safety, electrical shock. Safety grounding, fusing, interlocks, wiring, antenna and tower safety. G0B01, which wire or wires in a four-conductor connection should be attached to fuses or circuit breakers in a device operated from a 240-volt AC single-phase source? A, only the two wires carrying voltage. B, only the neutral wire. C, only the ground wire. Or D, all of the wires. Correct answer is A, only the two wires carrying voltage. G0B02, according to the National Electrical Code, what is the minimum wire size that may be used safely for wiring with a 10 ampere circuit breaker? A, AWG number 20. B, AWG number 16. C, AWG number 12. Or D, AWG number 8. Correct answer is C, AWG number 12. G0B03, what size of fuse or circuit breaker would be appropriate to use with a circuit that uses AWG number 14 wiring? A, 100 amperes. B, 60 amperes. C, 30 amperes. Or D, 15 amperes. Correct answer is D, 15 amperes. G0B04, which of the following is a primary reason for not placing a gasoline fuel generator inside an occupied area? A. Danger of carbon monoxide poisoning. B. Danger of engine over torque. C. Lack of oxygen for adequate combustion. Or D. Lack of nitrogen for adequate combustion. Obviously the correct answer is A. Danger of carbon monoxide poisoning. G0B05. Which of the following conditions can cause a ground fault circuit interrupter to disconnect the 120 or 240 volt AC line power to a device? A. Current flowing from one or more of the voltage carrying wires to the neutral wire. B. Current flowing from one or more of the voltage carrying wires directly to ground. C. Over voltage on the voltage carrying wires. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is B. Current flowing from one or more of the voltage carrying wires directly to ground. G0B06. Which of the following is covered by the National Electrical Code? A. Acceptable bandwidth limits. B. Acceptable modulation li limits. C. Electrical safety inside the ham shack. Or D. RF exposure limits of the body. Correct answer is C. Electrical safety inside the ham shack. G0B07. Which of these choices should be observed when climbing a tower using a safety belt or harness? A. Never lean back or rely on the belt alone to support your weight. B. Confirm that the belt is rated for the weight of the climber and that it is within its allowable service life. C. Ensure that all heavy tools are securely fashioned to the belt. D-ring. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is B. Confirm that the belt is rated for the weight of the climber and that it is within its allowable service life. G0B08. What should be done by any person preparing to climb a tower that supports electrically powered devices? A. Notify the electric company that the person will be working on the tower. B. Make sure that all circuits that supply power to the tower are locked out and tagged. C. Unground the base of the tower. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is B. Make sure all circuits that supply power to the tower are locked out and tagged. G0B09. Which of the following is true of an emergency generator installation? A. The generator should be located in a well-ventilated area. B. The generator must be insulated from ground. C. Fuel should be stored near the generator for rapid refueling in case of an emergency. 
or D, all of these choices are correct? The correct answer is A, the generator should be located in a well-ventilated area. G0B10, which of the following is a danger from lead tin solder? A, lead can contaminate food if hands are not washed carefully after handling the solder. B. High voltages can cause lead tin solder to disintegrate rapidly. C. Tin in the solder can cold flow, causing shorts in the circuit. Or D. RF energy can convert the lead into a poisonous gas. Answer is A. Lead can contaminate food if hands are not washed carefully after handling the solder. G0B11. Which of the following is a good practice for lightning protection grounds? A. They must be bonded to all buried water and gas lines. B. Bins and ground wires must be made as close as possible to a right angle. C. Lightning grounds must be connected to all ungrounded wiring. Or D. They must be bonded together with all other grounds. Correct answer is D. They must be bonded together with all other grounds. G0B12. What is the purpose of a power supply interlock? A. To prevent unauthorized changes to the circuit that would void the manufacturer's warranty. B. To shut down the unit if it becomes too hot. C. To ensure that dangerous voltages are removed if the cabinet is opened. Or D. To shut off the power supply if too much voltage is produced. Best answer here is C. To ensure that dangerous voltages are removed if the cabinet is opened. G0B13. What must you do when powering your house from an emergency generator? A. Disconnect the incoming utility power feed. B. Ensure that the generator is not grounded. C. Ensure that all lightning grounds are disconnected. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Answer is A. Disconnect the incoming utility power feed. G0B14. What precautions should you take whenever you adjust or repair an antenna? A. Ensure that you and the antenna structure are grounded. B. Turn off the transmitter and disconnect the feed lines. C. Wear a radiation badge. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is B. Turn off the transmitter and disconnect the feed line. And that will complete the slides. This has been Michael Dickerson, KC9, PHK, on behalf of the Clay County Area Amateur Radio Club. Thanks again for joining, and uh, obviously good luck on your exam.